Hello everyone, my name is Patricia Morenci and welcome to Mental Health Mondays. This is our ongoing series in which we answer questions, anonymous questions submitted by our campus community on a variety of mental health topics. If you are interested in participating, feel free to click the link to our survey below and it is also available on our Instagram account at U of A Caps. The link is on our bio. All right, let's get started. On today's episode, we'll be exploring privacy, confidentiality, ROIs, oh my. And we're gonna be answering probably perhaps the most common questions that needs, that a lot of students ask that need a bunch of clarification on, which is, Will my parents find out that I'm in therapy? So long story short, for the most part, no. If you are not a minor, you're 18 plus, whenever you seek services like CAP services or therapeutic services in general, typically that falls under a banner of confidential services, which means that we will not disclose to anyone that you are engaging in therapy services. There are a few exceptions though. And so we are not allowed to disclose information about your being in therapy to anyone besides yourself, unless a couple of things. First of all, unless you sign a release of information, which is basically a document that is telling us and allowing us to communicate certain th information about yourself to the people that you disclose. So this is something that you would have to fill out on your own that's giving us permission to communicate to whoever it may be. And so for some people, maybe a former provider, it may be a family member, it may be a significant other. And even within those things, it's very helpful to have a conversation with therapists about what specific things you want to disclose, right? A lot of times for providers, it's just for continuity of services. So if you were seeing a previous person, you know, giving us permission to kind of touch base on, you know, the main details of why you're being seen, you know, connecting medication services or transferring medication services, things like that. And in terms of folks in your life, you know, loved ones, family relationships and things like that, that really depends on you and what, comf and what information you're comfortable sharing. Most of the times it's for, you know, emergency purposes, um, but even so, we are required to give the minimum, most sufficient, the minimally, the minimally, look in my mouth, the minimally sufficient information, right? That can help us establish or maintain services with somebody. And long story short is that if you are asking us to release information to say a family member, we're not gonna disclose every single thing that happens in session, right? That's needless information that's not necessary to the cause. And you and your therapeutic provider can definitely discuss details as to why you want that information released, what type of information you want released. Okay. So that's one main, that's one main exception. If you give us permission to, to communicate for you. Another major umbrella of exceptions is for safety concerns, what I call safety concerns. And so that's a couple things. Usually in the beginning and the first time you meet a therapeutic provider, they'll give you the whole rundown on confidentiality and they'll say something along the lines of, you know, this is a confidential safe space. Feel free to talk about anything that you want to talk about and your information will be confidential with a few exceptions. And it's mainly for safety concerns, I like to tell my clients, which is true. So the only reasons we would break confidentiality is if there's a dangerous situation. For example, if you are at imminent risk of harming yourself or someone else, we have a duty to warn and protect. Okay? So that's many for your concerns that we know without a doubt that you are going to harm yourself or someone else. We have a duty to protect all those involved parties. Another umbrella of exceptions is if there is abuse and neglect. And so that's for special populations. So that's for minors, that's for dependent adults. So people that are unable to make decisions and function cogn cognitively on their own and for elders. And so if we as mandated reporters, which is a word that you probably may or may not heard of, mandated reporters are people who are under those special circumstances of abuse and neglect in those general categories. 
if we hear information about that thing that we know that someone's life is in danger or experiencing abuse or neglect in those specific categories, then we also have a duty to report. And in some other less common circumstances, if there's a court order for your information, we may have to follow that court order. So this is all to say, in the general sense of the term, a lot of students come in and they're afraid that if they attend therapy that their parents are going to find out or if their parents call the health center or the counseling center or wherever you get your services, that the person providing therapy is going to divulge all your information. And chances are that they won't unless you sign a release for that information. But if you did not tell us to communicate and you're not in an immediate danger, we will not disclose that information. So if that is something that you were considering in terms of therapeutic services, this hopefully should give you a little rundown on how we do things. So we definitely want to make sure that you feel safe and that you know that your information shared with us is confidential, with a few exceptions, of course, right? And that's mainly for your safety and concerns. If you found this short video helpful, I would like for you to do a couple things. I would like for you to like the video. I would also like for you to hit subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit that bell icon so that you can get notified for every new episode of our ongoing series. Until next time, see you later.